Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I'm a full-time animal artist, mother, color fanatic, and to help me manage my stress this year, I've been creating art every single day, and I invite you to join me. Here in today's tutorial, we'll be painting this beginner level retro kangaroo step by step in under one hour and even children aged 14 and up can paint this too. And lastly, congratulations Beth Newell who is the winner of my May giveaway and she wins one month free in my online animal art masterclass. Alright guys, let's get started. So you can access this traceable individually in a link down below, or if you'd like to access all my old and upcoming YouTube channel traceables, reference photos, and material lists, you can find those all in one place, distraction free, in the Dachshund tier of my online animal art masterclass. Now as we get all set up and ready, I'm going to share today's creative quiet time verse, which is from Romans 12:12. 12, 12. And it says, rejoice and hope, be patient in the struggle, and be constant in prayer. Now, when I first read this, it seemed almost so simple and plain that it doesn't make sense, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I wanted to dissect each part of it to really understand these instructions. So the first action is to rejoice, to rejoice and hope. And to have hope in the Lord is to have this confident, expectant knowledge that we are being transformed by God, cared for by God, and that we have a home in heaven with Jesus. Now we can have joy in that hope because it's a gift, it's not earned, and we can't change it, no one else can change it, it's an everlasting hope. Okay, next part, the second set of instructions are to be patient in the struggle. Patience in God is actively waiting on God to move. It means not giving up before a victory. It means we trust God before a breakthrough. Patience requires a surrender knowing that his timing is beneficial for us and his kingdom. And the third part is to be constant in prayer. Now this last part is near and dear to me and my family's heart because right now we're learning so much about the power of prayer the importance of prayer, we certainly don't have to have these long, eloquent, beautifully scripted prayers, but he can take those short prayers, he can take the long prayers, he can take the sloppy prayers, one word prayers, just straight from your heart kind of prayers is what he's looking for. So from all this, he's telling us to rejoice, to be patient and to pray. Now that doesn't mean you failed when you're not patient. It doesn't mean you failed when you're not consistently praying. And it most certainly doesn't mean you failed if you're feeling anxious or you're feeling depressed. It just means to try. Try and give what little you have, what little energy you have, what little hope you have, what little patience you have, and he will multiply that. We can trust him with the little things we have because it's in our weaknesses. It's in our small amounts that his power is made perfect. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. All right, creatives, if you have any prayer requests at all, I'm going to ask you to leave them in the comments down below if you feel comfortable, of course, and I'd be happy to join you in prayer. All right, so let's start on our background. I'm just going to go with a pretty simple background of like a turquoise. And I will use my large or my size six flat brush. Make sure it's clean and damp. And I'm gonna pick up some white with a little bit of phthalo blue and some yellow. A little bit more yellow than my phthalo blue. And I'm gonna pull in lots of white into that. Okay, that's a bit more green than I want, so I'm gonna pull in more white and more phthalo blue. Now the green I'm trying to achieve here is a mint green. It's like turquoise with lots and lots of white in it. It's not like a lime green where we have lots of yellow. It's not like a forest green where it's real deep and dark. We kind of want this a soft, tranquil mint green. And 
once you have a good amount of paint mixed up, we're just going to paint the entire background. And if you need to, switch to smaller detail brushes to go around the hands and the arms and above the ears. Now as we warm up with our background, let's have a chat about some things that I often do in my tutorials. For you beginners out there, for example, I tend to work pretty fast, so definitely utilize the pause and play button on your screen. If I'm going too fast, you can just pause, catch up, and then press play again. Or you can fast forward to see the specific colors that I'm mixing up that build off of one another. Also, another reason why I'll work relatively fast is so that I keep the colors that I've mixed on my paint palette damp or wet so that I can go back to them at the end and do some touch-ups with those colors. But really, don't worry. As I paint, I go through the colors at least once. Usually I try to say them twice. That way, if your colors do dry in your paint palette, you can always go back and remix them.
All right, so let's work with our really small brushes here because we're gonna use our black to get in around the eyes and the nose. So the brush I'm using here is a size zero liner brush. I'm gonna make sure it's clean and damp. I barely want any water on that. And I'm just gonna stick it, the tip into my black so I only have just a little bit on my brush because we're working real small here. And I'm gonna be careful not to go, have my hands go into my background. And I'm just gonna fill in both eyes. We see more of this left eye than the right. But very carefully, I'm just gonna fill that in with black. And I only just see part of the right eye. Now this is an interesting mouth. It's, it's a little difficult to see, but I'll show you here. This little area right here to the left of the nose, there's a part that's white on the left, far left, and then there's this line right here that's black. I will be filling that like almost this rectangular shape right here along the mouth, and then gliding my brush in towards the nose. And we're gonna have another part down here that we'll paint in. But then I'm gonna work to that nose and fill, fill in that nose with black. I'm gonna bring this up just slightly more than I have it. And you know what? I'm going to outline just the bottom of this mouth. See how on a reference photo it's kind of square shaped right here? Well, I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to thicken up this line on the mouth. And I'm also noticing on that eye, I'm going to bring up a line a little bit where it kind of curves around here. We'll darken that up with some of our other colors there around that like eyebrow, but I just want to bring that little part up on the eye. And then because there's that bottom part of the chin and I see it's a gray, I'm going to go in with white and some black, tiny bit of white, good amount of black, and I'm just going to fill in the small amount of chin that we see underneath that black line we made for the mouth. So I'm going to work a little bit bigger with my size one round brush now. And what we're going to do first is we're going to use a dark brown for the insides of the ears. So I'll mix up some raw sienna with our black. It's about equal parts black and raw sienna, just to keep that nice and dark. We will just be using this color for the inside of the left ear. The right ear is facing away from us. So I'll be painting within the left ear, leaving a white border around it. Now you can see I'm leaving in this outline around the outside. I just don't want to lose that. I want that to sort of be my guideline for the paint. So I'm going to leave a very thin white border around it. Alright, I'm going to wash out my brush, and that's all I'll do for that ear. We're going to use some different colors for the outer border and the top of the right ear. So, but we'll still continue on with this color. I'm just mixing some more up of our raw sienna and black, because I'm going to paint in the feet, like the little toes, which are much darker. And I'm going to bring it up to that line, a little bit further above that line that I have on our traceable. It's almost like they're wearing shoes, like flats. <laughs> and then I'm also going to use this for the other foot. And also the bottom of the hands 
if you notice, those hands are kind of curled under. You can't really see the fingers too much. I'm just mixing up some more. But I'm gonna paint in just the bottom part of the hands now. See how I didn't fill in the entire hand? Just the bottoms of it. Okay, let's get a little bit lighter now. We're gonna start working on this face and the ears. And the colors I'll use are raw sienna and some yellow ochre. That's raw sienna and yellow ochre. So I'm gonna start by outlining that eyebrow and I'm gonna work then between the, the, along the bridge of the nose, between the eyes, going straight down the snout. I'm gonna move this right below the left eye And I'm not going to paint in here because that actually gets a little lighter. We want to keep that kind of light. I'm going to also do the same thing along the eyebrow on the other side of the eye, the right eye. And bring this line. There's almost like this dark line that kind of goes along the forehead. And I want to keep with this color. So I'm leaving, I know it looks a little funky right now. I have white left above the eyes, white left just right on the forehead. And now I'm just working up the entire ear with this color. And I'll also use this as a border for the left ear. And the other place I want to put it is right here, right along the neck, that really muscular neck. Now, if you watch me, I'm going to be painting below that chin on that shoulder and also moving up along the jawline. So let's go a little bit lighter. I'm going to add in more white. and more yellow ochre, and even more white. Now all the white we have left on the face, I'll fill in with this color. Now I'm gonna leave this part and this part uh, white still. We'll use different colors for that. We'll continue working up that ear. There's a part that's highlighted right, it's almost like curve shape too. So I'm going to curve this around the ear. And not quite at the very top because there's that dark part, but right before that. See how I have like two almost like stripes on the ear? And then I'll bring this down along the neck with this color.
Now we still need more of this color actually, so if you need to, just pull in more so that you can add some more yellow ochre and white to it. We want a good amount because we still got lots more to paint with this one. Such as both arms we're going to carefully paint. You might need a smaller brush. Just gonna pull it up until like that muscle line. So like right here is where I'll, I'll, I'll stop with this color. Great, and now we're gonna also use this color for the legs, okay? Let's just start closest to the feet and work up. I am gonna paint over that line. There's a line on this back leg. I'll paint over it and paint it in later. And I'll pull it into about halfway here, like right this line. That's where I'll put, pull it in towards. All right, and then we'll work the other leg. Okay, if you watch me, I'm actually not going to paint this whole part. I'm going to leave some white to the very far right of this back leg here because what I'm going to do next is just pull in some raw sienna right there because I want that to be dark. Okay, and then I literally just wiped off the paint and while those two colors are wet, I'm just going to blend it together right on my canvas. See how I did that? I added it to the left side pulled in some raw sienna on the right side, and then with a dry brush, still a little paint on it, I then blended them straight on my canvas. All right, so we're gonna repeat that same technique that we did on the back leg on the tail. So I'll start with my lighter color. I'll be working mostly to the right and down on that tail, but right beneath, I will go in with my raw sienna and darken that up. So I'm just pulling in some raw sienna right now, right under here, along this line, up a little too, and I can just blend that in while it's wet. Now, if you watch me, I'm going to be blending these two colors together to darken it up just a little bit. It's like that in between, right between this brown and that lighter yellowish brown, tannish brown. And I'm going to add highlights to the left of the nose and to the right of the nose. It's actually not quite light enough. So you know what I need to do is I just need to add some white. So we have some to the left along that line and to the right. And I'll pull that down along this part of the nose also. And a little bit down to the left below that left eye.
And then we can't forget just that little part of the mouth. I'm gonna go in with just white. Oh, my brush has a little too much water on it. Just straight white, and I'm gonna pull it down along that part of the mouth. All right, so let's mix up the colors for the body now. It's gonna be some little bit more oranges that we start to add. So I'm gonna grab some raw sienna and some orange. So that's equal parts raw sienna and orange. And I'm even gonna add, I even have red right sitting right next to me that I was planning on adding, but I didn't, I didn't add it to my paint palette. And I'll add red into this color as well. Okay, so we have raw sienna, orange, and a little bit of red. And with this color, let's paint in the right side of the body. Now, if you watch me, I'll just be working on the back painting over our sketch lines from our traceable. I'll pull this down below the elbow and almost down towards the tail. And then we'll also be using it to fill in that space on the right shoulder. But just make a mental note of where we're covering up those two sketch lines on the back because we'll also use those for when we're applying our medium and light values. careful not to leave any white between your green and the body of the, the kangaroo. I'll bring it down to about there. You know where else I see this? I see this along that arm. So right below where we have that brown, I'm going to connect it to some of that this reddish brown. But if you watch me, I'm leaving some white along the top of this arm, this like shoulder area. But I'll bring it down to that light tan here. This line will help me know where to place those highlights that we'll add. You ready for the next color? Because we're going to be building off of this one. The next color, colors, I'll be mixing into this just to the right of it is cadmium yellow and a bit more orange. So that's cadmium yellow and a bit more orange into this mixture we were just using for that. And now let's work to the left along that other side of the chest. Again, I'm going to go over those sketch lines and I'm going to start working down and on this side of the arm I will again leave a highlight of white. Leaving this part outlined with our white from our canvas also. Now, I'm not quite done with this orange because what I'll use it for is just as a shadow for this little pouch here, right along the belly. As well as, I want to join these two colors together and I think this is a good, we might need another color in between here and in the orange, but between here and the red, I think this is a good color. And it's even going to come down a little bit on the back of that tail. All 
All right, let's get even lighter now. So for the next colors, I'm gonna add in yellow ochre and some white. That's gonna be, oh, I even added some of my green in there. Luckily that didn't make too much of a difference. I didn't wanna do that. So that's white and yellow ochre into that orange we had. Okay, and now let's pull back wherever we see that white around the arm and the belly. We're gonna use this color for that. All right, so let's add some highlights now. We have our dark and mediums down. Let's go with some lighter colors. Let's start with the highlights on the, the kangaroo's back. So I'm gonna go with raw sienna, yellow ochre, and some white. That's raw sienna, yellow ochre, and white. Let's give it a try. Yep, that works. And what I'm going to do, if you watch me, where those lines were before, it was like a like two lines like that. I'm going to work some of these highlights in there. Less is more, okay guys, with this technique. I'm on purpose trying to leave the bottom layer visible, but still applying these medium and light values over top. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up the different values on the kangaroo into different shapes. with this color I'll also add some more to the arm so I am going over a good amount of that red just inside this like shoulder area there so we still have some red left and I'll even work it up under around the neck and coming down along the chest So let's get a little bit lighter with, I'm just going to do a good amount of white with a little bit of yellow ochre. That's a, a little bit of yellow ochre, lots of white. Okay, so my first real strong highlight I see is on this leg. Now I'm going to work up the front of this leg with this color, as well as a little bit on the back. climb up that leg where we have a highlight right along that like knee we see this white coming along this part of the leg I'm just doing little linear dabs here we also see some along the top of the tail as well as, if you watch me very carefully, I'm gonna put a highlight along this, the top of this arm. See how I'm not covering up a lot of the, the base layer? I'm really trying to get the top without covering that up. And to the left side, because our light source is coming from here and above, I'm also gonna highlight this left side of the arm. and along the belly. And we're not done yet because we have this leg now. The top of the bottom area and then a strong highlight to the left of that other side of the leg. And you know what, I can even just do a very thin highlight along the other one, just like I did that one. Okay, we're gonna continue on. We still have some more. 
I'm going to use this highlight to climb up along the neck like that and also to outline this ear. see a highlight that I can add right there along the side of the face and also to the left side coming down into the neck just right up there another place is right here where we have those two stripe looking highlights I'm just gonna do that on both of those highlights Now I'm gonna add even more yellow ochre into this color because I kind of want to darken this highlight for the back area. For right here, see how I just added more yellow ochre into that light yellow ochre mixture? Well, I just want that a little darker for the back. And that's our third layer for the back. Now I won't bring this all the way down to the tail, but almost. And then I'll be working it up over top that orange on the back of the leg. Okie dokie. So we have this like on the tops of their ears. It's like this black stripe or marking. Well, instead of black, I'm going to use a blue with a tiny bit of white. So I'm going to make it this dark blue with a little bit, very vibrant with a little bit of white. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to paint the tops of both ears. It's really shows on the this right ear but it's a little bit on the left ear too. Now there's this area on the chest that I think we need some like almost light oranges there. So I will do that. I'll do my cadmium yellow with a good amount of orange. So it's just this light colored orange. And what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight the bottom up. Oh, that's not quite light enough. So let's add some white. Yeah, let's get some white in there. So I want to go as if we had that line that we're painting under. I just want to get it underneath that line and then a little bit on the top of that line. Just creating little shapes here. Ooh, I love that color so much. I want to figure out where I can add it. I know I can add some right here, right along the leg right there. Ooh, and let's get along this arm. A little bit underneath the feet on both feet and what I want to do I love this orange so much that I think I want to bring up that orange a little bit I'm going to just mix orange into that just to get it a little darker into that color we were just using and that's what I'll do just pull up that orange a little bit as well as right on the stomach where it's getting just a little bit of light. Not much, but just a little bit.
I could have brought this right up along this part. Just didn't bring it up high enough. And a little bit further up that tail. And a little bit on that knee. and phalo blue mixture. This is gonna be a medium to dark blue, so a good amount of white, lots of phalo blue. Now, if you watch me, I'm gonna be working behind the kangaroo, and I'm not trying to make these lines perfectly straight. Some parts are a little wobbly, some parts are thin, some parts are thick, but all I'm focused on is just having them all along an angle, and they're gonna to be touching one another, either on the left side or the right. Also, that line is going to go through the kangaroo's torso, of course, behind it, but that's where we're going to begin. We're going to layer colors to the left of it and to the right, but I'm going to be careful not to layer colors that are real dark around that foot because then we'll start to lose that kangaroo foot. Next color, we'll just use white, and now I'll be working below that blue line we just made. Now make sure you wash out your size one round brush really well before uh, mixing another color. But next, over on the opposite side of the blue, we'll be creating a vermilion orange. So it's permanent red with lots of orange. It's just a very deep, darker orange. I'm going to make this side a little thicker. Same with this side. I want to make this kind of go up and become a little thicker and then get a little thinner down here. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we're going to actually create a lime green now. It's got to be much more yellow than our background mint green. So you want white, cadmium yellow, lots of it, and a little bit of phthalo blue. That's white, lots of cadmium yellow, and a bit of phthalo blue. I want to make sure there's a good amount of yellow in that because otherwise we'll mix up the exact same color of our background and we don't want that. We want it to be lighter so that it stands up over top that background but also works really nicely too next to that deep orange. I just feel like we need a pink. I feel like over top the turquoise background it would just look so lovely to have a, a bright colored pink so lots of white with permanent red and I'll add that next right next to the green. A little bit more white. Again, these lines definitely don't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure that we're keeping it in the background, not anywhere in the foreground. And this will be our last color for this little retro 70s looking rainbow in our background. All right, creatives, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Now, if you're proud of your paintings, or even if you're not, please share them in the public YouTube community group, also linked down below. I just love seeing your work there, plus it inspires a lot of other creatives there too. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to help any of you. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye.